Hello everyone, my name is Gilsan. Welcome to my channel. Today I will make myself the Albion blouse. It's a free pattern from Peppermint magazine in collab with Vanessa Hansen. I wanted to share with you how I will make this blouse because I won't follow all the instructions for a change. <laughs> Oh, and before I start, I just want to mention that I'm going to sew the short sleeve version of the Alpian blouse and instead of having a front facing, I will have an entire lining for the front pieces. Yeah, I know, I don't make things easier, but trust me, it will be much better and nicer. First of all, I place and pin the pattern pieces onto the fabric. I make sure all the pieces are aligned with the grain line. After that, I cut all the pattern pieces. I also prepared the bias tape to make the ruler loops and bias tape for the hem as mentioned in the instructions. Here, I'm preparing the interfacing for the short cuffs as I'm doing the short sleeve version. But I will only fuse into facing on one layer, which means on the half of the pattern piece to have into facing only on one layer. Then I'm also prepping into facing for the back facing. After I press all the into facing pieces. As always, before starting my sewing project, I make sure to place all the marks from the pattern pieces onto the fabric. For that, I cut first the notches. To trace the dots, I need to know where the dot points are on the fabric. And for that, I base stitch them. I place the pattern piece on top of the right and left front fabric. Where the dot point is, I go through all the layers with my needle and thread. I only leave the thread on the last fabric layer and I push the needle from the bottom fabric next to the same place I started. Then I cut the thread. I do the same thing with the other fabric layer. I also use this technique to mark where to sew the buttons. I don't know if you can see it, but I cut the notches for the dots let me show you with the pen, so you can see better. Here, you see the base and stitch for the dot point. I'm using my vanishing pen and this is how I trace the dots. Now I'm going to overlock some pieces. Here are the details. The front necklines, the shoulder and the side seams. The bottom of the short sleeves and the side seams. All around the back facing, except the neckline. The shoulder seams of the back and the side seams. After, I pin the dots and while I pin, I make sure they are perfectly aligned. That's why I check both layers. Now I can sew right here. Once that's done, I make a knot at each end of the dot points, like this. Then I press the dots towards the center front. I don't need the basting stitch anymore, so I can take it off. For the Alpion blouse, you're supposed to make dots at the back as well, but I chose not to. I take the bias tape to make the strip for the loops and I roll it around my turning set to check where to sew exactly. I have to sew 7 mm from the edge. Here, I folded the fabric right sides together and you can pin all the way down if you want, but I just do the beginning. It will be enough for me. As I'm using a turning set, 
I closed one edge of the strip. Otherwise, I can't turn the strip the right way around. After that, I cut the excess fabric. To turn the strip the right way around, I use this little tool. I insert the tube until it meets the stitching at the opposite end. Once I reach the closed edge, I gently push the road into the turning tube against the sewn end. You will have the road, then the fabric being pushed inside the turning tube. And voila! After, I press the strip. This is how it should look like. Let me show you closely. I don't need this end, so I cut it off. Then I measure five centimeters for each loop. I will only need three as I'm doing the shorter sleeve version. Here I'm stabilizing the front neckline with seam tape. I didn't have enough tape, so I prepared some strips with interfacing. You can also stay stitch if you want, but in that case, do it before the overlocking process. As I want the buttons on my right side, here I take the left front lining, right side up. I put some marks for the loops, but I don't think you can see them guys. So they are here, here and here. I pin the loops aligned with the center front. Let me show you closely how I place them. So here you see the sewn side of the loop. I pin it like this, so the sewn side is in the middle. Then I will sew five millimeters from the edge. So, I started the assembly part, but I made a mistake. As I'm doing the lining for the front, I thought I can assemble the front with the front lining and then adjust the necklines of the back and the back face. That was clearly a mistake. It doesn't make sense. I know I'm just tired. So here's the thing. When you're tired, Stop sewing because you don't pay attention on what you're doing, obviously. Here, don't pay attention to my mistake, okay? Imagine I didn't assemble the center front. I take one right and one left front and place the back facing on top, right sides together. Then, I pin the shoulder seams. After, I take the other right and left front pieces and place the back piece on top, right sides together. Then I pin the shoulder seams. I'm going to sew the shoulder seams one centimeter from the edge. There you go. Now I can press the seams open. Finally, I can make up for my mistakes. Woohoo! Here, as you can see, I already sewed the center front earlier. I aligned perfectly the right and left fronts with the right and left linings. Here, you see the shoulder seams? I make sure they are aligned and I pin them in priority. Then, I match the middle of the back with the middle of the back facing. After that, I pin all the way down on both sides and sew one centimeter from the edge. Once that's done, I press the seams open. To have a nice flat shape around the back neckline, I cut notches like this. Then I fold my top and I push the corners gently. I press the center front and the front and back necklines. This is how it looks like from the inside. Now I turn back the fronts on the wrong side. I pin the bottom edge and I make sure the dots are aligned. Then I will sew 5 mm from the edge.
First I cut the corners here and then I turn the fronts the right way around. I push the corners gently. Now I will press the bottom edge. Here I have the back piece and the bias binding that I cut. You can use a pre-made bias binding if you prefer. I put it on the bottom edge, right sides together. Then I pin all the way down and I will sew 5 mm from the edge. After that, I press the bias binding towards the seam allowances like this. Then I turn the back to the wrong side. I fold the bias binding by 5 mm, it's covering the seams allowance, and I press all the way down. Once that's done, I fold again by 5 mm like this, and I press. Now I pin it to keep it in place and top stitch close to the folded edge. From the outside, it should look like this. And from the inside, like this. This is how the top looks so far. Now I will assemble the sides. I place the sides right sides together and pin. I cut the excess fabric from the bias binding. I will sew one centimeter from the edge. This is how it looks so far. Now I press the seams open. To have a nice and clean finish on the inside, I will top stitch both sides of the side seams 5 mm from the edge. If you didn't understand, this is how it should look like. Now it's time to assemble the sleeves. I align the side seams right sides together and pin. I will sew one centimeter from the edge. Then I pin the shorter sides of the short curves right sides together. And I will sew one centimeter from the edge. After that, Press the seams open. Next, I fold the edge of the short curves where it's not interfaced by one centimeter and press all around. Before assembling the sleeve to the top, I will sew the armhole, so the outside and the lining layers won't move during the assembly. So for that, I pin all around the armhole and I make sure the shoulder seams are aligned. I will sew here 5 mm from the edge. Here I will do some gathering. For that, I set up my machine to the longest stitch length and lowest tension level. And I will sew two rows of gathering stitches about five and seven millimeters from the edge. Here is a closer look. Then I gather by pulling the threads carefully and I make sure the bottom of the sleeve matches with the short cuff. After that, I insert the sleeve inside the cuff like this. The wrong side of the cuff is up and the sleeve is turned the right way around. I match the seams and pin all around. I sew one centimeter from the edge. Look, how perfect is this? I can take off all the gathering stitches now. All clean! Now I will gather in between the notches here and I will do the same thing as I did with the bottom edge of the sleeves. Here is the fun part. I insert the sleeve inside like this. I align the seams like this and pin. Then I align the side notches and pin the bottom part of the armhole. After that, I start to gather the sleeve 
and make sure it matches with the armhole. While pinning, I also make sure that the top notch is aligned with the shoulder seams. I will sew all around 1cm from the edge. Then I will overlock here to have a clean finish. After, I press the seam allowances towards the cuff. Here, I cut diagonally the excess layers from the seam allowances, so it won't be bulky. Next, I fold the cuff in half, like this, and I pin all around by hiding the seam allowances inside the cuff. I will do an invisible stitch all around. Once that's done, I press the cuffs. I tried the blouse to see exactly where to sew the buttons and the press studs on the inside, because the marks from the pattern don't fit me well. So, I pinned the blouse as you can see, and I will mark here to place the three buttons, and on this side, I will sew three press studs on the inside. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, you can comment down below as always. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then support my channel by subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up, and sharing it with your friends and family. See you next week. Bye bye.